Welcome to Plantique 101, or as my friends would call it, Plantique. -Q. My name's Susie, and today I want to talk a little about my upcoming season. We're at the end of fall. I live in the Northeast United States in Pennsylvania, and it's starting to get cold. I've had to turn on the gas heat a couple nights already, and it seems to be lowering the humidity. Now, gas furnaces don't directly lower your humidity, but the cold air outside has lower humidity and it's brought, as it's brought in, it lowers the humidity in my house. Either way, I'm losing humidity in my house and I have some plants that enjoy high humidity. So I'm gonna build some do-it-yourself greenhouses to keep that humidity in for some of my more humid loving plants, cuttings, and uh, maybe some of my more delicate plants. Hey, everybody, it's Susie Q. Okay, so I've gathered together all the pieces that I'm going to need to make my enclosure, except for the shelf. I'll be bringing that out in a few minutes. And the coffee, it's optional. We have our lighting system. My hygrometer or hygrometer. This is going to not only read my temperature, but also the humidity rate, the high and low of the day. Um, I really like this. It's programmable between whether it's uh, centigrade, Fahrenheit, this is the outlet that I'm using for a couple of reasons. It's got my USB ports, which you'll see why I need in a few minutes. And these outlets are on its side. I find this so much better when you have this kind of lighting, because if you plug it in this, you're covering up all of the lights. You're covering up everything. So I like these, what do you call them? Sideways lights when I'm using these kind of plugs. So I have that. My plastic tablecloth scissors. This is the emergency rescue foil mylar blankets. Very affordable and, and everything will have a link below. And fits right in here but it's huge. It's enough to do the whole greenhouse and this is still folded. So I really like the uh, Mylar Rescue Blankets. Timer. I use a timer. These lights actually have a programmable timer, but there are many times that it's more than just my lights that I want on timer. Maybe I don't want the fan to run 24 seven or the humidifier to run 24 seven. So I have my timer and this will plug in also sideways. So we have plenty of room for this and the lights my fan. Tape, I use packing tape because I'm using clear around. I want it to look as aesthetically pleasing as possible if it's in my living room. Zip ties. I use zip ties for everything. I'm going to be setting these up in there because you never know when you're going to want to have a hanging basket. So as far as creating humidity, there's three different methods that I use. One of these tiny humidifiers that I put my RODI water in, which is reverse osmosis water. You can use distilled water. You can use, you can even use your tap water. You'll just be changing the filter more often. But since a lot of my plants don't like my tap water anyway, I stick to my RODI water. I have it set up under my sink. I usually, that's what the water that we use to drink. That's the water I use for my salt water tanks and uh, some of my shrimp tanks so or so that's method one number one it's a cute little usb powered again usb powered humidifier the other way i do is in my tupperware i usually almost every one of my greenhouses has a tupperware with leca and water in it this is a usb air pump you just plug it in and just it blows out air and attach that to this stone and put it under water. It's going to agitate the water, bubble it up. That will create humidity. A lot of water agitation there. Or my $20 little fogger machine. So I have these in some of my reptile enclosures. I really like it because it creates fog and the fog will create humidity. So it's real simple setup. And this would go in a deli cup of water or any one of my containers. I just don't usually put it in anywhere where my, there's gonna be roots. 
but I always have a small container of water. Just put it in. As soon as it covers the top, we'll go over this one. Those are my methods for increasing humidity. Yeah. This is it. And all my affiliate links will be below if you're having a hard time finding them. Let's get started. I'm going to move this out of the way and bring my shelf over. This is a standard black metal rock that I was referring to. I use these outside on my porch all summer long. Well, actually late spring, summer and early fall for many of my plants. And now that it's winter and I've brought them in and put them places, I thought what better shelf to use than the one I'm already using outside. Now, these have uh, little screws on the bottom of the feet so I can level it off, which comes in very handy because outside on the porch was a little different than it is in here. And the levels that I have on the shelving, I have about six inches on the bottom for stuff. Stuff that's not going to be inside my enclosure, but that I'm always going to grab and look for and have. This way I always have it right there and handy. This, you can make this as compact as you want. If you're doing seeds, you could do shelf after shelf after shelf after shelf. You just get extra shelving. I'm doing this more for some plants, cuttings, and some of my cuttings could be about this long. I, I just got a, one of my marantas broke off, so I'm cutting. So I don't want it too short because this is going to be for my seeds and, and cuttings. And whatever plants and I wanted to make sure it's large enough for some of my larger plants like if I wanted to hang a Hoya I could hang a Hoya in here and still have room to hang a fern in here so now that's why I did this and this is a shorter rack I have other ones I don't know if you could see this one I have this one that is much taller it's probably I guess if I it's probably six foot tall this is probably six foot tall, so the top shelf is up here. So this is different. This has three huge shelves and my shelf underneath and room on top. But this one over here is only this high, which is great because I have some plants that don't necessarily need the higher humidity. I can utilize the top. So before I get started, I'm going to put some zip ties in. And since I don't really know where I want them, I'll just put some randomly here and there. I use zip ties for everything. I'm going to be setting these up in there because you never know when you're going to want to have a hanging basket. So the very top I know I'm just going to cut out plastic. I'm going to cut out plastic. There we go. To fit over the top that's it that's easy enough that's a start that's a start and i'm not going to attach this it's just sitting here it's just for the plants that are on top if i don't want them to drip down on lights or anything like that you might want to set yours up so everything on the top as you over as you water them without a tray underneath would go down to this and this and you can line them all up that way before i connect the sides i'm going to put on my Mar mylar tin foil material and what that's going to do is be very reflective you can actually add a shelving unit you can add a piece of wood let's say you want something more stable what i have done in the past is i've taken a piece of wood and put it down as a shelf let me show you what that looks like oh so these mylar blankets are very very i think they're like a dollar each i didn't realize how noisy it would be to crinkle the foil while talking by crinkling up the tin foil, th this will have many more reflective surfaces. So now that I have that one shelf down, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wrap the back and the two sides of my shelving unit with my tin foil and tack it to the top with the tape, keep it in place. It's almost like using a third hand it comes in really handy. And I will wrap it around the side, the back and the second side. my fan. When you're creating a very humid environment for, for your plants, especially if you got uh, soil, some kind of soil, I use a USB 
It's programmable, soft, medium, and hard. Programmable. It's a programmable fan. So it can be very light flow or it can be very heavy. And it can clip on or it can rest on the shelf like so. And it's a USB. So here's a very affordable USB connected humidifier. And all it is is you put, I put my distilled or RODI water in the bottom. This is the filter. It comes with a couple of replacements. Screw it on. Plug in the USB and click that button. This is what it looks like when it's done. It just shoots out humidity. And this is what I'm going to use to humid humidify at least one level, if not the whole enclosure. So what's next? Fan, humidifier, lights, and plastic. That's what's next. Put a little plastic topper on it. So what I have found in my experience that my plastic topper is separate from the walls and sides. Now I'm going to hang up the lights. Now I've never used these lights before. But I'm giving them a shot, and I like them because they're white and not purple. I have, oh, and they come with their own zip ties. And this is how they connect to each other. And since I only have two shelves with four strip lighting, I'm going to put lighting on both sides. Under here, we're going to put the next two. Oh, there's three. Ooh la la. I might even be able to do some for the ones above. So there, you I can have three per shelf. Or I can do two per shelf. I like it. I have an idea. Instead of the extension, I'm going to actually attach the light going down along the pole. So I could have a lengthwise. I do like that idea. I'm using LED lights that connect to each other. So I'm only plugging in one outlet. It's going to be so much easier. But it's not required. You can get any kind of grow light you want. You can use any kind of light you want. I find these to be very, very convenient. Okay, I'm going to speed this part up a little bit. And now that it's all done, let me test it. So I got the Mylar, I got the lights. Now it's time for my tablecloth. One of the things that I'm not really fond of with the the store-bought indoor greenhouses is the zipper. I want to bring the plastic over about three inches and then another flap on top. So it's covered by a flap, but it's easy to get in and out of. So that's what I want to do for this. Now it's time for the plastic. So this size that I got, this is a PVC tablecloth, 100% waterproof, but it should have been 60 inches, five foot. Perfect. Look at that because that's exactly what I wanted. Let's take this. Take this. I'm going to hold this to make sure that I still have my three inches up front. Right to the top. No overlap. I'm going to wrap it around so that there's a three extension here. Now remember, I already cut the plastic for the top. And then I'll slice two little lines in the back and pull the bottom underneath to keep it totally enclosed. And this is going to be my overlap so when I lay my plastic on the front I won't have to worry about that. The whole thing is now wrapped in plastic. This humidifier is over here. The humidifier on this level 
will be underneath these grates. There's no plastic here, so they will be able to share humidity. I'm even thinking if I put a fan down below, if it will not bring it all the way up. So these fans come with batteries that get charged up. Okay, so let's test. We've got a jar of water. I'll put this fogger down here. Okay, I'm in the home stretch. So now I'm just going to put on the top. And what I want to do is have it overlap on the two ends and overlap in the middle. Because access is important from any direction. I'm just going to cut it straight up the middle. And then this here, it'll overlap in the middle and the sides. So we're ready to turn it on. And the light action. Boom. Oh. Let us take a closer look. Okay, so let's take a closer look. So we have our humidifier over here. That's being blown a little bit by this fan right there. Which almost makes it look like it's being sucked into the fan, which is pretty interesting. Now we have a fan on this side blowing in this direction towards the mister. And any extra fog would be coming up here, adding to this. So it's blowing this way, this way. Oh, I think I like it, guys. And this over here, just so you can see, this is the mister that I was talking about, the fogger, not mister. Just put into a little container of water. We'll keep Susie Q showing. Susie Q showing with Planty Q. This one's Q Aquatics and Exotics. And that one's Mini Q's for my miniatures. I like it. Now let's get some plants in here and see how it looks. And I've got my storage on the bottom. Then you can see the foil rippling a little bit with the the wind or the fan and the ventilation and it's nighttime now so you can't really see my plants on top but and I think I'll do a video on my humidity loving plants because this was fun But I'm really liking it. Thanks for coming out and checking out my DIY indoor greenhouse. I think it's going to serve the purposes very well in the end of the fall, winter, and early spring. At least until I can build a greenhouse outside. A girl can dream, right? Hey, everybody, it's Susie Q. Hey, everybody, it's Susie Q. Na na, hey, everybody, it's Susie Q. So come along with me. Said I'm Susie Q.